What is up you guys? It's Susan Morad right back here on Clever News and just weeks after Taylor Swift was finally able to re-record her old masters, Scooter Braun has sold those original masters to an investment company. But in true Taylor fashion, she always gets the last word. Taylor Swift fans have been eagerly waiting for the day she would be free to re-record her own masters after Scooter Braun's company Ithaca Holdings acquired the master recordings of her first six albums from Big Machine label group, Taylor's former label. But a fresh new twist in the Scooter Swift saga has been set in place as Variety reported on Monday that just days after Taylor was free to re-record her masters, Scooter has just sold the master rights to Taylor's albums. As of yesterday, the deal was reportedly made with an unknown investment fund that forked over more than the $300 million Scooter initially purchased them for, which would mean that Scooter cashed in on a pretty hefty paycheck. Variety reported that the deal closed within the last two weeks and that it was a big win for Scooter, who already profited from the initial investment. As many Swifties are aware, Taylor has previously spoken out about Scooter's controversial business transaction, calling him a bully and stated that he was, quote, the definition of toxic male privilege in our industry. In a public statement via social media, Taylor added, this just happened to me without my approval, consultation or consent. After I was denied the chance to purchase my music outright, my entire catalogue was sold to Scooter Braun's Ithaca Holdings in a deal that I'm told was funded by the Soros family, 23 Capital and the Carlyle Group. Yet to this day, none of these investors have bothered to contact me or my team directly to perform their due diligence on their investment, on their investment in me. Taylor finished her statement by saying, the fact is that private equity enabled this man to think, according to his own social media post, that he could buy me. But I'm obviously not going willingly. Scooter responded to Taylor's statement, claiming that he had attempted to schedule a private meeting in person last year, but nothing ever came of it. Although Taylor will still be able to re-record her music with no legal consequences, Swifties rushed to her support upon hearing the news of Scooter's sale. And we love you Taylor began trending on social media. Even artist Sarah Bareilles couldn't help but chime in tweeting, I will never not feel like this is just effing robbery. Greed is a virus too and it's everywhere. F that, Taylor Swift sending you love. But because we love a good Taylor Swift Easter egg, many others shared theories based on Taylor's latest Rolling Stone interview with Paul McCartney, alluding to the idea that she may have some knowledge of the big purchase. One fan pointed out that Taylor had mentioned the number 300 million twice during the interview when saying, I think that learning that lesson from you taught me at a really important stage in my career, that if people want to hear love story and shake it off, and I've played them 300 million times, play them the 300 millionth and first time. Another user mentioned another portion of the interview where Taylor and Paul were talking about using pseudonyms, tweeting, I think Taylor bought them under a pseudonym. She's clever like that. While this user shared another theory that read, I long speculated that her stated intention to re-record was a bluff, meant to pressure them into selling. But as we were all warned by Taylor herself, who would not go willingly, she has since shared an update with fans on what this deal with the investment company actually entailed and where she stands on the whole situation. Taylor Taylor shared a letter to fans on Twitter, starting off by saying that as fans are aware, she has been actively trying to regain ownership of her old masters for the past year. And with that goal in mind, her team attempted to enter into negotiations with Scooter Braun. However, while negotiating with Scooter's team over the past year, he wanted her to quote, sign an ironclad NDA, stating I would never say another word about Scooter Braun unless it was positive, before we could even look at the financial records of BMLG. Taylor admitted that her legal team claimed that this was absolutely not normal to do before Scooter would even quote her a price. Taylor said, quote, They've never even seen an NDA like this presented, unless it was to silence an assault accuser by paying them off. Therefore, Taylor refused to sign the NDA and said, quote, The master recordings were not for sale to me. Tay then added that just a few weeks ago, her team received a letter from a private equity company called Shamrock Holdings stating that they had purchased 100% of her music, videos, albums, and artwork from Scooter. But as communication with Shamrock continued, Taylor explained, quote, I learned that under their terms, Scooter Braun will continue to profit off my old musical catalog for many years, adding that, I was hopeful and open to the possibility of a partnership with Shamrock, but Scooter's participation is a non-starter for me. Taylor then included a copy of the letter she wrote to Shamrock, politely declining their offer to work with them, writing, quote, 
If I support you as you request, I will be contributing to these future payments to Scooter Braun and Ithaca Holdings. I simply cannot in good conscience bring myself to be involved in benefiting Scooter Braun's interests directly or indirectly. Taylor also stated in her letter to Shamrock that she will be going forward with her original recording schedule and will be embarking on that effort soon. And soon has already arrived, my friends, because in Taylor's Twitter statement to fans, she confirmed that she has in fact begun the process and there's a lot to be excited about, writing, quote, I have recently begun re-recording my older music and it has already proven to be both exciting and creatively fulfilling. I have plenty of surprises in store. I want to thank you guys for supporting me through this ongoing saga and I can't wait for you to hear what I've been dreaming up. It's looking like the light is finally able to be seen at the end of a long dark tunnel as Taylor continues to pave the way for other artists, especially females, to fight for their rights and own their art in an industry that is heavily dominated by male execs. And so on that note, I want to leave with you Taylor's parting words in her statement that were quote, I love you guys and I'm just going to keep cruising as they say. As Swifties put it best, we love you Taylor. Keep cruising and we'll see you on the other side of all of this. And for even more good news on Taylor and her relationship with Joe Alwyn, click right over here for another clever video. Then be sure to let me know all of your thoughts on Scooter's latest business transaction in the comments section below. I'm your host, Susan Morad. You can find me on Instagram at Susan underscore Morad. I'll catch you later. Bye, guys.